Hello, this is Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages. Available on Amazon.com. This is my blogspot, economicdarkages.blogspot.com. We're going to discuss the differences between Sunni and Shi'i. Before we do that, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the post and read what I wrote out hear about Americans. Americans are totally ignorant about the conflicts in the Middle East and most don't even know the differences between rival Muslim denominations. Americans tend to make decisions based on propaganda they hear on news networks like Fox News or MSNBC. These networks have a bias and an agenda. Now, when you think about it, if you look on Facebook or other forums or even talk to people in public, they'll get in arguments on things that are less important, such as gay marriage or um, abortion, okay, race. They'll get in fights about race over and over and... They'll sit there and they'll fight over and over about these things, but when it comes to real politics, they don't put much effort into understanding real politics and real issues and uh, the economy and such. So Americans typically don't read up on the details of events or do any constructive research other than short headline news that tends to draw on the emotions of some violent, violent event which the news then tells you what to think based on emotional responses from the stuff you see without knowing the full details of the conflict or past history of. So they're just playing on your emotions. Many Americans quickly supported the invasion of Iraq because they believed the news and had thought Iraq had attacked us in 9-11 or had weapons of mass destruction, but they did not do or have either, yet Americans supported the attack based on those grounds. A full invasion and occupation was supported, which cost many American lives, many Iraqi lives, and severe financial losses to the U.S. due to the cost of war, and there was further destabilization of the Middle East especially in Muslim regions, which were better off without American military intervention. The majority of the terrorists on 9-11 were from Saudi Arabia, according to a Huffington Post article, an estimated one half million have been killed in Iraq since 2003, but you will hardly hear these statistics being reported by pro-war media. Most were, uh, most killed were from Iraq, which included a high civilian death toll. As it stands, many Americans are also dumbfounded about the origins of political friends friendships between the Saudis that have to do with oil, rather than a true friendship, and a, and it's based on a shady agreement made during the Nixon administration to have oil traded in U.S. dollars. See Petrodollar 1973 agreement. Link is included. So you have to go to my blogspot, economicdarkages.blogspot.com. I'll put the link in the information section of the video on YouTube. And I don't mean to call anyone ignorant if they're trying to learn. At least you're trying to learn, but many are not trying to learn and they make judgments before they go through the trouble of researching stuff. The difference between Muslim groups, Sunni or Shi'i, terrorist groups, the Syrian war, the difference between Shi'i and Sunni Muslims. The study of the Middle East region can be a complicated one, especially if you are not from there. To clear things up, there are two major types of Muslims. Sunni and Shiite, or Shiite. 
S-H-I-I-T-E. The Sunnis are the majority, comprising 80% to 90%, and they are also the ones responsible for ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Yes, that's right, the Sunnis. But the news will confuse this subject because Saudi Arabia is considered an ally. But it just so happens they are the major Sunni country where its origin, original origin began. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which sometimes is called the home of Islam, is the location of the cities of Mecca and Medina, where Muhammad, the messenger of the Islamic faith, lived and died. Osama bin Laden, as you can see from Wikipedia and other sources, was a Sunni and financed from Saudi Arabia, according to WikiLeaks. See third par paragraph under Early Life of Education on Wikipedia, link included. ISIS, according to Wikipedia, the Islamic State of Iraq and Ash Sham, or simply Islamic State IS, is a Wahhabi Salafi jihadist Islamist militant terrorist group and self proclaimed Islamic State or Caliphate, which is led by and mainly composed of Sunni Arabs from Iraq and Syria. So you see the pattern they're Sunnis, not Shiites. Shiites are uh, the the Shiites are from Iran, Pakistan, Iraq, and India. Okay, so I I think most Americans think it's backwards. It just seems like it, and that's why it seems to be presented by the news sometimes. Shiite Islam is the second largest denomination of Islam in 2009. Shiite Muslims constituted 10 to 13 percent of the world's Muslim population and between 68% and 80% of the Shiites lived in four countries, Iran, Pakistan, Iraq, and India. And also the leader of Syria is a Shiite Muslim. He's not a Sunni. Shiite comes from the word Shia, which means the party of Ali. The Sunnis murdered Ali, who was appointed to be the su successor to Muhammad by the Shiites. The division began after the death of Prophet Muhammad some 1400 years ago as a disagreement about who should succeed him. The Sunnis felt that Abu Bakr, B -A -K -R, a close friend of the Prophets, ought to be the next Muslim leader, but the Shiites claimed that Muhammad had anointed his son-in-law, Ali, as his rightful successor. Since I can't read this very well because of the names, I'm going to speak it. With the Yavis Sultan Selim, who delivered a devastating blow to the Shia Safavids and Ismail I in the Battle of Calderon, a battle of historical significance. Okay. Yav okay. Yavas Sultan Selim. Yavas Sultan. Yavas Sultan. Yavas Sultan Selim. Yavas Sultan Selim. Yavas Sultan Selim, who delivered a devastating blow to the Shiites. Shia. Safavids. Safavids and Ismail won in the Battle of Calderon. Calderon. A battle of historical significance. <laughs> Sorry, those words are hard for me to speak and then also speak in English at the same time because you sort of lose your tongue. <laughs> So anyway, that's the basic difference between the Shiite and Sunnis. It evolves around who should be the successor to Muhammad. That's the basic difference, and they tend to not 
have that many differences otherwise. But these differences are being um, encouraged, in my opinion, to create a war. And this war doesn't really have to do with the Muslim faith but it has to do with the petrodollar agreement in 1973 made between the Saudis. My name's Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages, available on Amazon.com. You can follow my blog post on economicdarkages.blogspot.com. Thanks for listening.